let's uh, restart the class. So we saw that Ban Ki-moon thinks if we make the investors and the investment companies to buy bonds and lend money and buy stocks and companies to swear that they will think about these things, then it can help the companies to be more socially responsible. Okay. So, other voluntary standards we have for lenders, for banks, banks are important because banks lend money to companies. So if the bank tells the company, I'm not lending you any money because you're damaging the environment, then the company has a big problem, they're going to have to change, right? Especially if we think about big projects. Do you know in China they had a really big project to build a dam or reservoir? Do you understand the dam? So called the Five Gorges Dam. How do you say dam in Korean? Dam. Dam. <laughs> I see. So, anyway, this project wouldn't have got the loan from a, a bank in the UK or the US, right? But it got a loan from the bank in China. Why wouldn't it have got a loan in the UK or the US? Because it damaged the environment in the area where they made the dam, right? Uh, they changed the course of the river, a lot of wildlife died, right? That kind of thing. So, if that, nobody has the cash, nobody has the cash to make that kind of project, right? You have to get a loan from the bank. So if the banks don't give you a loan, then this can make a difference. So the banks are important in this area too. The International Finance Corporation made the equator principles. Okay? These are a benchmark for the financial industry to manage social and environmental issues in project financing. Do you understand project financing? Giving money for projects like building a dam or building a factory. Large money, usually more than $10 million. So this applies to deals over $10 million. It covers 85% of the financing in the world. First of all, what do they do? The banks do a screening and categorizing the project. They do a social and environmental assessment. They do some risk management planning. Finally, they do monitoring. Do you understand screening? Yeah. And categorizing? Yeah. So, we should first say what kind of industry is it? High polluting, low polluting. Then the client, is the client usually damaging the environment or did they have any problem in the past? Okay, then we have to monitor them. Are they doing what they said? And see if they're improving also. So we have other rating agencies and indexes, just like for the company's credit or financial situation. We also have a rating agency for their uh, ESG situation. So we saw Dow Jones. They work together with a rating agency called SAM. SAM is an agency which goes to the company and makes the report. Then they sell the information to Dow Jones. Okay? There is another index in Europe with the video company. IRIS in the UK, in Europe, and CDP does the, does the rating, the CDP Leadership Index. So we haven't looked at the CDP Leadership Index yet, let's have a look at that. Maybe we'll see a nice picture of Bill Gates. <coughs> Carbon Disclosure Projects. A lot of these things, they just make the US, they love abbreviations. Do you like abbreviations? Uh, yeah. When I went to the US the first week, people were saying to me, then the SRS needs to go into the DIT. And then after the DIT is finished, then you should go over to the LGS. And I didn't know what they were talking about. <laughs> right? Because they always use abbreviations. And if you work in the company, you have to learn very quickly the abbreviation. Right? Because they they are used to using the abbreviation every day, mm -hmm. right? So we can see these kind of things, US culture. They don't say carbon disclosure project, it's too long. They don't say global response in, uh, initiative, it's too long. They don't say corporate respo social responsibility, it's too long. 
They don't say environmental, social, and government. It's too long, right? Can you remember what they mean? CSR, ESG, CDP, GRI? Hmm? You can't remember? Yeah. Which one is which? Mm -hmm. So just like that, you need to get used to the abbreviations. It's easier in the end. In the end, it's for you to say corporate social responsibility. Can you say that? <laughs> Can you say? And maybe you can forget or make a mistake on the pronunciation. So it's easier to say CSR, right? So I think for non-native speakers, abbreviations are helpful. Maybe that's why in the US they use a lot of abbreviations. A lot of immigrants came to the US, right? I don't know. Could be cultural factor. So anyway, this is the CDP uh, homepage. So they said, why disclose, so on. Members and signatories, okay? So again, we can see who the members are. They work with investors and companies to make sure that their carbon emissions are going down. They have some partners in the governments and so on. Okay, so this kind of company is an NGO, big, one of the world's biggest NGOs. Do you want to work for the CDP? No. Hmm? No? Anyway. They might have a job for somebody in Korea to find all the information about the companies in Korea, right? <coughs> so, most companies these days disclose their carbon emissions. So, what do the rating agencies look at? Chris? Yes? I have a question. Yes? Like all these other groups, to, so they can improve their reputation in a company. Let's say I have like really bad reputation, but to improve my reputation, I can join PRI and all these other groups. Yes. But I might put a bad views on by joining all these other group. What's the standard point? Like at least I have reached this much, so I can join this group. The standard. Point. These groups, the GRI and the CDP is just reporting. No. If you're joining them, you're just reporting. So the, the, the basic thing you need to do is report your... For CDP, you have to report your carbon emissions properly. If, if you don't do that properly, then you won't be allowed to join. The GRI, you need, if you just answer one or two questions from the whole document, mm -hmm. it's not going to be doing properly, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, they're... GRI is a voluntary thing at the moment. I said in Norway or Denmark, they, in Norway, the top biggest 100 companies on the stock exchange, it's now legal. They have to make the GRI report. But for the other companies in other countries, it's just voluntary. So you make a bad GRI report, that's your business. It's not a membership, of, you know, not really a membership thing. It's you make the report, if you want, you can use the GRI way of reporting. If not, you don't use the GRI way of reporting. If you want to join, they will help you. If you join the GRI organization, they will introduce you to another company. And another company will help you, like your buddy. They will help you. Oh, we did a report last year. It's really easy. Why don't you do it like this? Right? Just give you advice. Yeah, so if you join, you can learn how to properly do the reporting in that area. Didn't you say that if I join PRI group, I can improve my reputation? Yes. So I might misuse, like if I, let's say I pay membership fee, yes. and then I can improve my reputation so I can do my business like... Even that's a problem, more. right? Yeah, so what's so, so the that's, that's the problem with uh, principles. You have to trust people. It's not a law. Mm -hmm. So the principle system, we said that international law is not that strict. That's the problem at the start, right? We can't make strict international laws, it's just not possible because people are always going to have different opinions. And one's opinion is always going to be weaker than the other. So, it's not going to be as strict as some people would like. So then we need voluntary standards. And if we make a principal system, we have to trust people that they are going to keep their promise. Do you trust people that they keep their promises? No. <laughs> You're skeptical? Somebody might use this system for their own benefit? Uh -huh. 
Yes, but if they're obviously, if it's very clear that they're not, if they're not thinking about ESG. But anyway, the principle is quite vague, right? It's not very specific. How can you show that the people didn't think about it? They could say, oh, well, anyway, I thought about it before I invested, right? So you're right, it's, it's, not, it, it's not that strong either. But it's something, right? It's something that the companies are going to think about this before they invest. Yeah. So uh, it should encourage companies to improve in that way. But it's not perfect. Do you have a perfect solution for making companies do the ESG? Do you agree with Norway? Would you make it uh, compulsory that companies need to at least report yeah. in this area? Yeah. Can you make them do a better job in this area? You need to make new laws for the environment. New laws for non-discrimination, right? So on. National laws. But if you don't make the national laws for whatever reason, or the international law, then you can uh, have the company can do their own voluntary. This is encouraging companies to do a good job. What? They can get some benefits. So the rating agencies are going to come to the company and give them a rating. So some fund managers they make their own rating system for companies. But most fund managers would use these companies and these indexes for the rating. Do you trust Dow Jones that LG? Do you trust Sam and Dow Jones that LG is the best company in the electronics industry in the world? Or you don't trust them? Trust. trust them, right? If you don't trust them, you can go and check the company yourself. Make your own way, right? But most people trust them. So these are the things they check when they come to your company. So if you have a company and you want to get a good rating, you need to do these things, right? All of them check our environmental management system. How good is our environmental management system? Okay, all of them check how much CO2 emissions we have in one year. Everybody checks that. Everybody, three out of four check how much energy we use. Three out of four check our policy. Do we have a good policy about the environment in our company? Three out of four check, do we interact with policymakers? So do we communicate with the government, with the politicians, with the departments who are making the new laws in this area? Okay? Do we do some research, publish some paper on environmental issue? Where is the highest placed person in the company with the responsibility for the environment? We talked about this for ethics. Where is the highest placed person in the company? Very low. Then it seems the company doesn't care about ethics. Where is the highest placed person next to the CEO? Then yes, the company cares about ethics. The same for the environment. Who is the, where, what position are they in? So uh, the next one is the laws. Does your company, did your company have any problem with the laws or regulations before? And finally, do you care about your suppliers and your suppliers' environmental standards? Right? So when you're choosing a supplier, do you choose the supplier who does well for the environment? So if your company does all of these things, well, you can get a high rating. There are other things too that the companies check, but these are the kind of basic things if you want to have good rating in the company. So let's look at the case study. So we have uh, ANZ. This year, 2014, there was another bank which was the world leader. But a couple of years ago, ANZ was the number one on the Dow Jones Sustainability Index for a number of years. It's being uh, replaced now. So we're going to look at this bank and see why was this bank number one on the index? What is it doing that was doing very well? And then we're going to look at ICBC, a bank in, a, in an emerging economy, China. This was number one ranked in China in the banking industry at the same time. Okay? So we can get an idea. This is number one ranked in China, this is number one ranked in Australia, or in the world. So there's a, we can get an idea of the difference between the emerging and developed countries. Okay? In China, 
Companies have poor environmental standards compared to other emerging market economies. So generally, Chinese companies is not as good on the environment. They view green as compliance. So in China, it's a little bit like law and ethics. They think, once we keep the law, that's it, finished. We've done our job. We don't have to do anything else, right? Do you think that way? Does anybody think that way here? For, also for ethics or the environment? Just following the law is enough. We don't need to do anything else, anything extra. Do you feel that way? No? Some people might feel that way. Just we need to follow the law, that's it. But the problem is the laws on the environmental protection are often not implemented. China has a, a system where they have the central government in Beijing. And China is a very big country with a lot of cities, local cities. And local cities have their own power. So what happens is the local cities don't always follow the laws of the central government in China. Okay? For example, the local politician thinks this factory is going to create a lot of jobs. I know it's going to be a big pollution. Let's say it's a steel factory, right? They say, I know it's going to be a big pollution, but it's going to create a lot of jobs. So I don't care that it breaks the law. I'm going to start this factory. And then the central government in Beijing, they can't do much about that, right? So this is an issue in China. So let's look at each of these. We're going to look at each of these things for each company. So the first one is the comprehensiveness of the EMS. So ICBC doesn't have an environmental management system. It doesn't have the ISO standard. Okay? ANC has the ISO standard. It uh, assesses its impact on the environment and sets performance targets, measures and reports progress. What about greenhouse gas emissions and energy use? So, ANZ, very detailed data. Okay? It breaks down its energy use by types, such as fossil fuels, or renewable energy, or so on. ICBC made the GRI report, but they only gave basic data, just business transport. So this is from about three years ago. Uh, they only the energy use for their head office, not all their banks. The comprehensiveness of their policy. ANZ has a specific policy for forests, water, mining, minerals, greenhouse gas and energy. So they have a policy for each area. How do they make the policy? They use the international standards. So let's have a look at an example. Do you know the Forest Stewardship Council, FSC? No. So this is an NGO, right? Maybe you don't know it, but it's the world's most important NGO for forests. Do you understand forests? Yes. Do you like going to the forest? Yes. Korea has a lot of forests. Ireland doesn't, right? I like going to the forest in Korea. When I came to Korea first, I thought a lot of people told me their hobby was going to the mountain at the weekend. I thought, oh, that's very boring, <laughs> right? But actually now I go to the mountain at the weekend, my wife. Because in Korea that's what there is, right? There are a lot of mountains and forests. Do you go to the mountain at the weekend with your parents? Yes. Yes, sometimes, right? Uh, so, for example, last week I went to some place around... Uh, what was the name of the mountain? I'm very bad with Korean names. <laughs> I should, oh, Yum Yum. I should remember because it was famous. Do you know Yum Yum Sam? Yes. yes. I went there two weeks ago. It's quite nice. Park. Right? So we want to keep the forests. We don't want them to be cut down. So this is an example. This is an NGO. They made their policy on forests. So example could be the NGO tells them if a company cuts down a tree, they need to plant another tree. Okay. So ANZ made this policy. So, uh, for example, a paper company asked ANZ for a loan. Do you understand paper company? Yes. Yeah. But they didn't have this. They, ANZ told them, are you following the forest council? Are you putting up one tree for everyone you cut down? And the company says, mm, no. Are ANZ going to give them a loan? 
or not give them a loan. The paper company is not following the standards set by the Forest Stewardship Council, right? Like, for example, one standard. You cut down one tree, you need to plant two trees, right? So ANZ ask the paper company, before they give them a loan, do you plant two trees for every one tree you cut down? And the company says, no, we don't. Is ANZ going to give them a loan? No. No, they're not, right? Do you understand? They make this kind of policy. So they use the international NGOs to help them. This is one way the NGO can help us. They are the expert in that area. We don't know, but if they tell us companies should be doing this and should be doing this then, they're the experts, so thank you for the information. Okay? Then I'll use this information. ICBC, they have a policy in that they restrict their loans to high polluting and energy consuming industries. And they promote loans for energy saving industries. So, IBC is doing a little bit better here than earlier. They have a policy. Okay? The government is promoting this policy in China. Less loans. What is a high polluting industry? Could you give me an example? What is a high polluting industry? What kind of industry is this? Oil, steel, do you know making steel? Yeah, heavy manufacturing, heavy industry. Okay? So they have 14 industries with high energy use and high polluting. They are called too high in China. And they don't give them much loans. And then China actually has a lot of uh, renewable energy. So this could be one reason. The government is promoting loans to the renewable energy companies. Do you understand renewable energy? Yeah. China uses a lot of solar power and so on. Right? So the ICPC, if you're making renewable energy, set up a company, they have to give you the credit. Right? Easily. So now you have another business idea. Go to China and set up a solar company. Go into the bank and say, I want a loan. Give me a loan. I'm a solar company. Solar energy. And the bank might say, no. And then you say, but look at your policy. <laughs> the government says, and your policy says, you're, you have to give loans easily. So give me a loan. And then they'll say, okay. <laughs> then you can get a big loan for running a solar energy company, right? In China. So now you two guys both have business ideas. <laughs> Maybe I won't see you next week, right? <laughs> You'll be in China with her. She'll be helping you <laughs> to get set up. Your solar company, right? With no of your own money, just all loans. Okay, so we can understand the <coughs> policy. So, what about the interaction with the policy maker? ANZ, they participate in the bodies and with the government. Uh, ICBC in China, they also in China, it's very state-run. Companies owned by the state, so. Even though they, they sell some stock, the company owns the, the Chinese government owns most of the stock in ICBC. Okay, uh, we talked about the industry, classified the industry, so we can get an idea of the different reporting. One thing about countries in emerging economies in China, especially, is they don't like being told what to do from the outside world in China. So they want to make their own system their own way. They don't want somebody to come to them and tell them, hey, you're bad, you're polluting the world. Why don't you take my guideline? Join my GRI, join my PRI, right? This is the right thing to do. I'm right, you follow me. Do you like if I talk to you like that? No. no. Chinese people don't like if people talk to them like that either, right? They're going to say, if you talk to them like that, they're going to say, no, I don't have to follow your way. Just I'll make my own way. Okay, so just uh, these kind of bodies are working with the companies in emerging economies, just slowly trying to convince them in not aggressive way that it's better to do this kind of thing, right? Or join these kind of things. So some of the banks in China, they joined the equator principles and they're starting to join more of these international agreements, but they can't be pressurized into doing that quickly. Just they should feel that it's their own decision to join up uh, these kind of things. Of course, one other point about China is in the 1980s, the US had a policy 
of getting rid of their high polluting manufacturing industries from the US to other countries. And China was one of the countries. So the government actually said things like, uh, okay, this industry is a high polluting industry. It's okay that it leaves the US and goes to China. Okay? At the time, China accepted a lot of these high polluting manufacturing factories because they wanted to improve their economy. So do you think it's okay now for the US to turn around and say to China, hey, your pollution is really bad, you need to cut your pollution. <laughs> do you think that's okay? No. Not really, right? The US sent a lot of high, their high polluting industry to China, okay, on purpose. So can they really say to China now, oh, you're damaging the world's environment, right? So it's kind of an argument at the moment. But we can see that neither the US nor China are leaders in environmental matters. Okay, but neither of them signed the, the Kyoto Protocol, so uh, we have other countries, countries like Norway, Australia, are taking the lead in those areas. So, uh, do you have any question about this part on CSR? So, let's just look at the ANZ uh, Corporate Social Responsibility section on their webpage. So, a lot of times, corporate social responsibility, when we go to the company's webpage, we can find the uh, CSR section. Or we can search for the, the CSR. They want to make it more uh, uh, visible for people these days. So, here we have, about, usually in about us, we can see that, right? About us. Corporate responsibility. Okay, so a lot of companies have that on their web page now, and they will have a lot of information. Okay, here they have the CEO's message, the framework, how they do that. Here we can see links on the side. Then they have reporting and performance. How are they doing? How do they report their targets, their performance? So we can click on their performance in 2014. So what have we got? We have a corporate social responsibility report and review here. Okay, so this is just a review, it's a shorter way. The report is going to be more detailed. So this is important for companies. One of their reasons for doing CSR, improve their reputation. So they're going to put this on their website, right? Put this information up there, show some examples like, what's this? Indigenous native people on an island getting some training. What a nice company ANZ is, right? Training these people. Okay. So then we have the headings and so on, right? So this is the kind of report they make. They did a lot of volunteer work, 100,000 hours by volunteers. They did financial education for this many people. Customer complaints was reduced. They invested this much in the community, maybe in the local soccer team or so on, right? Uh, lent this much to renewable energy projects, okay? So now if you want to start a company, you can start a renewable energy company. You know you might get a loan easier. <laughs> Do you think they have that policy in Korea too? Hmm? Maybe. They reduced their CO2 emission by 5%, that's not too bad, right? Then they engage their employees and so on. So you can see they're a member of the Dow Jones and the CDP, the ones that we talked about, okay? Their score in CDP was 98 from 100. So they have half 50,000 employees, it's quite small, it's not a big bank, right? So we can go down through their report and in your own time, you can read that if you like on their home page. They make that kind of report. So let's discuss some questions with our partner. So first of all, what is CSR? Discuss with your partner. What is CSR?
Well, if you're not sitting next to somebody, then change your seat. You need to do some discussion exercise. So you guys are not sitting next to anybody, so kind of change your seat so you're sitting next to somebody. Discuss together. for these things, right? For society in those areas. They need to report and show the world about those how they are performing. Okay? What are the benefits of doing well here with CSR or the environment? Discuss with your partner. What benefits can you get from scoring high score for CSR? Improve our reputation, what kind of benefit do we get? Avoiding a scandal 
and mm -hmm. and uh, can be gained on recognized leaders. Um. Hey, and we can keep our staff better, right? More, even more than keeping making more profit, it's it's uh, more linked with uh, retaining or attracting staff by having better reputation, right? Yeah. So maybe you saw that LG scored well on the social thing, then maybe you might prefer to work for LG than another company, right? A similar type of company. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, what about attracting private investment? Could you give an example? Alternative private investment uh, company uh, has improving reputations is relationship attracting private private investment. So how does that work? How do they? How can we show that companies can get more investments if they mm. are nicer companies? Mm. What are they included on, or <coughs> what agreements are there? Agreement and report. Report corporate report. Yes. Yeah, so they make their report. How does that help them to attract attract more investment? Do you understand attract investment? What's an easy way to attract invest? Say attract investment in English. Get money, right? <laughs> so how does it help companies to get money, get loans, or get people investing in their company as stocks? How? Hmm. How to get the investment? Yes. Good. Uh, make, the, uh, make the masterpiece to the product. The company, uh, example, the Apple, Apple comparison makes the iPhone. Mm -hmm. So many people like this item, so the Apple stock price is too high. That's, uh, people like the item, that's just normal. That's normal business, right? But how can being a nice company? Is there involved in green funds? Hmm? Private investors might look at the reporting in that and uh, might be interested. Okay, so we had green funds, one example. We looked at the green fund on Dow. Do you understand the green fund? Yes. Only green companies are included on green funds. Okay. Is there any fund which is not green fund? Does that exist? not green fund, doesn't exist, right? So because there are green funds and people invest in green funds, it means that you can attract more investment. Also, we have the PRI, right? A lot of companies these days are going to think about, think about this before they invest in your company. Okay, so that maybe that's even more important, the PRI, okay? So, uh, Next question is, uh, what are some voluntary standards for companies? Discuss with your partner. What are some voluntary standards that customers can do? For CS1. International voluntary standard.
Frau Nam Boon Chan. What are some voluntary standards? Some international standards that companies can follow. What are they? Voluntarily. You know? So what is the answer? Sorry, I don't know. Okay. Uh, Yang Yong Sok? Yes? Isu G or Ijus G Su. Ijus Su not here today? Yes. Uh, Ijin Yang? Yes. What voluntary standards did we talk about in the class? <laughs> Do you understand voluntary standards? Do you understand voluntary standards? You don't understand voluntary standards? Do you understand voluntary? Do you understand standard? Yeah. Then do you understand voluntary standards? Standard is something which we should do to a certain level. So it means like uh, you have a certain standard for entering the university, like minimum requirement, right? So in this case, the company has some legal standards that it has to follow the law, some minimal requirement by the law. But in this case, we make the standard ourselves, voluntary. The company decides to make the standard, okay? So can anybody answer this question? Yes? This company not but the company what kind of certifications do, can they get for organizations that we talked about today? ISO, GRI, OECD guideline. OECD guideline. What else? UNPRI. What else? CDP. Okay. They're the main ones, right? So we, do, we can do the equator <laughs> principles if we're a bank, just a bank. Banks do this one, the equator principles. Okay. So is it like um, it's not a law that it's not an obligation that we have to follow, but mm -hmm. it's like really voluntary standards that the company should follow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. <coughs> so some we said some. Countries have different cultures, right? We said that in China, they just think once they keep the law, it's okay. So they don't really think that we need a voluntary standard. Why? We're keeping the law, right? We don't have to go any further. 
Do you think the same way? Companies don't need to do voluntary standards. Won't they keep the law? It's okay? Me. Mm. There's no reason to do the voluntary yes. standard? Yes. Okay, but corporate social responsibility, that's the point. It's saying the opposite. It's saying that companies are also responsible for society, mm -hmm. right? So companies have to go further. They have to do some voluntary, something voluntary by themselves to be responsible socially responsible. Okay? So they should do those voluntary things, organize their company properly, and uh, so on. But also, they're not, some companies are not doing that just because they're nice companies. They also know they can get some advantage. Okay? You can get disadvantage by doing that. So any questions? No. So let's finish there for today. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah.